You just kind of just lay it out there on the piece of paper and if it looks good, great. If it fails, then it's over and done with. There's no going back and correcting it. Ideally, when you ink a comic book, it should have that same sense of immediacy to it. I recently got back from a two-year stint studying Japanese calligraphy as a part of a research scholarship funded by the Japanese government. I think one of the things that really makes uh, East Asian calligraphy unique is how it strikes a balance between this kind of sense of liveliness, this sort of vitality and a stability. Um, you can look at the characters and they feel very stable, but at the same time there's this incredible sense of movement to it. You know, each of the individual lines is this kind of dynamic stroke. But at the same time, of course, you want the sense of life and movement and energy to it. And so for me, kind of looking at at some of these fundamentals that I learned from East Asian calligraphy, it, it was a, a very easy for me to apply those to my comics. My work has become not only more consistent, but also has more of kind of a sense of energy to it. I've been drawing comics since I was 16, and actually Japanese comics played a really significant role right from the get-go. I've actually spent uh, about half of the last decade living in Japan. Um, first as an English teacher in southern Japan, and secondly as a calligraphy research scholar. Tonoharu is a uh, planned four-volume graphic novel I'm working on about a young American college graduate who moves to Japan and kind of lives in rural Japan and teaches at a junior high school. Uh, it's a work of fiction, but it was heavily kind of influenced by my own experience kind of doing a similar sort of thing. For writing Tonoharu, I, I kind of start with something that's maybe somewhat similar to a screenplay where you just sort of show the dialogue that the characters are saying. And eventually I move into something like this where it's just, you know, chicken scratchings. I mean, it's just to get some sort of visual sense of, of what I'm looking at uh, for the stories themselves. And as I say, very kind of loose, sort of crude drawings. Generally speaking, I have, you know, four panels per page. And I draw each panel kind of on its own sheet of paper, like this. I scan that into a computer, shrink it down, add the words, add the color. With Tonohara, I'm trying to sort of give a sense of what it's like to live abroad for an extended period of time. And that's obviously a very kind of complicated uh, scenario that has many different aspects to it as you kind of get used to the culture. I draw my uh, comics in three main steps. Uh, the first is penciling, and then inking with a brush, and then finally inking with a dip pen. Right now I'm penciling the panel, and that's basically, you know, as you might expect. Going over with a pencil, sort of trying to define the space, get a sense of, of what I want to include and what I want to exclude in, in terms of the composition of the shot. For this particular scene, uh, the main character has returned home from a, uh, a trip to, to Kyoto. This is the part where I ink with a brush. Uh, that's taking all those pencil lines where they're kind of, kind of have this sort of fuzzy energy to them and trying to sort of distill those down to a single kind of dynamic stroke for each one. The character is what matters most, so I tried to have just as few strokes as possible for the characters themselves so that they would sort of pop out more. Just trying to establish the city of Kyoto in this in this uh, series of scenes, and so this is one that tries to communicate busy marketplace. For the smaller lines, I use what's called a dip pen, which you just dip in ink like that, and it's it's great because it, it gives you these kind of uh, the fine control over the lines. You can do kind of these parallel lines that it would be very difficult to do with the brush, but at the same time, an advantage that it has is uh, you can go from thick to thin, so you can get lines that are maybe a little more interesting. Foreign travels had a really profound effect both on my work and kind of, I'd say, my life in general. I've tried in Tonoharu to kind of express that experience, to show what it's like to go to a country where, you know, you may not know the language, you don't know the customs, and, and what does that mean? You know, how does that affect your perception of the world and your understanding? I decided to go with a very limited color palette as an independent cartoonist. You can't really afford to do full color throughout. 
But also I think I was very heavily influenced by Hokusai, which is a Japanese uh, artist who lived in the 19th century. He did that kind of very famous, the great wave of Kanagawa woodblock print. I think Lars plays a really important role in independent comics, you know, not just here in Minnesota, but also, you know, across the country. He's um, really doing a good job marketing his book. Um, that's one thing that sets him apart from a lot of self-publishers. So I have another two volumes of Tonoharu that I'd like to finish up. And after that, I'd really like to write kind of a uh, layperson friendly introduction to East Asian calligraphy as a comic book, because I think it's a really interesting art form that really deserves kind of this kind of user friendly sort of introduction that doesn't really exist in the English language at present. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota.